Good evening and welcome to our Ash Wednesday worship service. This service, per tradition, is a cooperative effort between Hillsboro Presbyterian Church and New Hope Presbyterian Church. We welcome Reverend Alex Fisher of Hillsboro Presbyterian Church as our preacher this evening. A few notes about the service this evening. Our liturgy is adapted from a sanctified art, which is a cooperative of artists and ministers. You will see more sanctified art on the New Hope Presbyterian Church website and Facebook page as the season of Lent continues. Also, you may or may not have any ashes at home for observing this service. That's okay. If you want to make the mark of the cross on your own forehead or your family's forehead, you can just use water or some oil, or you can take a piece of paper and mark a cross on that. Use it as a visual reminder during the season of Lent. Let's begin with our call to worship. This is in our online bulletin, and I invite you to participate with me. We are invited into the story, into this place, into this hour of worship. We are invited into reflection, into community, into our own spiritual journeys. We are invited. The broken and bruised, the hopeful, the new, the faithful, the doubting, the wondering, the waiting. We are invited because God so loved. So listen, trust the invitation, and bring your whole self. All are invited to this time. Let us pray. Holy God, we know that you are near as we worship in our homes and various locations at this time. You are always here. You gather us together, even if we are in small groups, even if we just have fellowship with you at this time. You are just a breath away. And yet so often, Lord, we talk to you like a stranger. We keep our genuine concerns and fears and doubts tucked away into little corners, out of sight and out of mind. This Lenten season, help us to be honest and open with you. Lord, so often we try to use logic or the power of our minds to explain your great unknown. Help us this Lenten season to remember the love and awe and joy that we felt as children. Too often, Lord, we limit our experience of you to one hour on a Sunday. This Lenten season, help us to hear your constant invitation into the holiness all around us. Guide us, Lord, continue to invite us in. We are here. Amen.
Join me in a prayer for illumination. O God, our Creator, there is a rumbling in us that will not let go. It stirs in us like the wind stirs, stirs the leaves, inviting us to move, drawing us forth. When we're quiet, we know that rumble is the Holy Spirit, dancing love awake in us. So we are here, and we're still, and we're quiet. And on this first day of Lent, we are asking you to draw near. As we hear your scripture read aloud, open the door for us to move. Invite us in, rumble us awake. Gratefully we pray, amen. Our traditional scripture reading for Ash Wednesday is Psalm 51. I invite you to get out a Bible or uh, look up these verses on uh, an online Bible and read aloud with me. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Here ends the reading. A reading tonight comes from the Gospel of Luke. Hear these words from Luke chapter 4. Jesus returned from the Jordan River full of the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. There he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and afterward Jesus was starving. The devil said to him, Since you are God's son, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied, it's written, people won't live only by bread. Next, the devil led him to a high place and showed him in a single instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said, I will give you this whole domain and the glory of all these kingdoms. It's been entrusted to me and I can give it to anyone I want. Therefore, if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it's written, you will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil brought him into Jerusalem and stood him at the highest point of the temple. He said to him, since you are God's son, throw yourself down from here. For it's written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And they will take you up in their hands so that you won't hit your foot on a stone. Jesus answered, it's been said, don't test the Lord your God. After finishing every temptation, the devil departed from him until the next opportunity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forty days. That's how long Jesus was in the wilderness, full of the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, 
and tempted by the devil. Forty is a biblically significant number. For forty days and nights it rained and the earth was flooded while Noah and his family waited in the ark with the animals. For 40 years, Moses and the Israelites wandered in the wilderness, journeying toward the promised land and learning what it means to be God's people. For 40 days and nights, Elijah journeyed to Mount Oreb to experience God, sustained only by two meals of bread and water, but was filled with great doubt and fear. Wilderness, waiting and longing. These are the themes surrounding the number 40. And this is true of the season of Lent, too, which we begin tonight and observe for the next 40 days ourselves. But for the past year, it seems, wilderness, waiting, and longing have been our story. We probably find some resonance with these biblical heroes We've been waiting ourselves for the flood to pass, wandering in uncharted territory, figuring out what it means to be God's people, and experiencing a tremendous time of doubt and fear. Yet it's also been a time of recalibration and tremendous growth. We've come face to face with harsh realities about who is protected and who is not in our society. We've come face to face with what truly matters in this world, not prestige or profit, but people, our loved ones, our neighbors. This is what we've truly missed in this time of quarantine and isolation, each other. Power and prestige and provision are what Jesus is tempted by from the devil in the wilderness. The devil tempts Jesus to turn stone to bread. The devil tempts Jesus with power and authority over all the kingdoms of the world. The devil tempts Jesus with the prestige of using God's power for show. Even now, in the midst of this pandemic, these are the things we are tempted by every day. Profit, popularity, significance, fame, influence, control. In one way or another, we all need things like food and money and a community of people affirming who we are. But when we turn these things into absolutes, twisting and distorting them and relentlessly pursue them at the cost of our relationships and forsaking God's call, that's when we've lost sight of the heart of things, who we are and who we're called to be. It's interesting that Luke points, puts this story right in the middle of Jesus being named and claiming his own identity and purpose. Before going in the wilderness, he's baptized and named as God's beloved. And after his time of fasting and prayer, he heads into his hometown and reads from the scroll of Isaiah in the synagogue. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus is tempted, but he never loses sight of his identity and what he's come to do. So Lent is our recalibration and reminder of our identity and purpose too. Lent is our time to reconfigure our priorities and remember who God made us to be. We are God's beloved too, friends. And we are called to preach the good news and proclaim God's favor to the marginalized and dispossessed ourselves. In the next 40 days, we have two focuses to consider. Scholar Lawrence Stuckey puts them like this. One, we consider our human condition, namely sin and its deadly consequences for both individuals and society. And two, we equally intensely consider the new possibilities offered to us in Jesus Christ and their implications for practical living. We are invited to take stock, submit ourselves humbly to God's will, and be willing to be changed by it. 
Penitence moves us into repentance and redemption. Restitution moves us into restoration. Death to our old and tired ways moves us into new life. This is also what today is a stark reminder of and why it's important to seriously take stock of these things. Ash Wednesday is a healthy reminder that one day we will all die. There's no getting around that. It's the face that all of us face sooner or later. Unfortunately, that's a reality that's come a lot sooner for our friends and family in the midst of this pandemic. But this has always been our reality. We do not know what tomorrow will bring. If it comes, we are made from dust, and to dust we shall return. This is not cause for despair. Rather, it's an opportunity to embrace hope and rejoice in the work of Christ with the time that we are afforded. In Christ, death is conquered. In Christ, we are resurrected and given new life. In Christ, we remember that though we may die, we are transformed and able to live our lives with a sense of freedom. We don't have to be weighed down by the reality of death and sin. We can instead be lifted and empowered by the Spirit of God to live into those new possibilities for our world and beyond. As we Presbyterians say in our statement of faith, in life and in death, we belong to God. So whether we live or die, whether we find ourselves waiting out the flood or wandering in the wilderness, or hiding in the cave of a mountain, or being tempted by all manner of sin, we are God's beloved, called to be God's people. Typically, we think about giving something up or taking something on during Lent. But this year, consider what you might explore and participate in that will change you for the better and help you seek greater conformity to the mind of Christ. Here's a list of questions that Lawrence Stuckey poses that might be useful for us to consider in this time of wondering and longing. What progress am I making in sharing gladly with what I have with others, particularly with the stranger and the poor? What attitudes do I convey to those who irritate me? How can awareness of my own need of God's grace enable me to be more gracious to them? When I hear someone being unjustly maligned, do I speak up to support them or correct the record, or am I a silent accomplice? How can I more effectively and consistently support legislation and social programs that help the disadvantaged rather than hurt them? As I uncover an attempt to deal with one level of prejudice in my life, what other levels do I find lurking underneath, and how can I confront them? In my own acts of prayer, reading, and devotion, am I increasing my capacity to listen rather than speak? How can I witness to the power and presence of God in my own life while also appreciating the way God is moving and working through others in my church and in my community? These are not things easily traversed or taken lightly. And I'm sure there are a multitude of other questions that might come to your mind over the next 40 days or so. But as we take this journey together, in this time of wilderness, wandering and longing, as we are confronted with our own temptations for power and prestige and become filled with fear and doubt ourselves, may these simple words find you again and again to remind you who you are and who we're called to be. In life and in death, we belong to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we invite you to consider a Lenten discipline. There are many disciplines available for you to consider during this time. If you're a member of Hillsborough Presbyterian Church or New Hope Presbyterian Church, you can access devotions, uh, maybe a Lenten bag or kit through your congregation. For everyone who's watching, this is a great time of year to begin reading scripture regularly or simply to just 
Make sure that you make more time in your schedule for silence and listening to God. Whatever discipline you choose, we pray that it will be meaningful for you and bring you closer to Christ during this time. One traditional discipline for Lent is imposition of ashes on Ash Wednesday. The ashes are created from the palms used in last year's Palm Sunday service. We dry them and burn them and create these ashes. And so now let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and our penitence. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Lord, it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If you're with members of your household or if you are by yourself, you can participate in the imposition of ashes. Suggested wording for this year is as the ashes go on your head, say in life and in death, we belong to God. And the response suggested is thanks be to God. So Alex, in life and in death, we belong to God. Thanks be to God. Carrie, in life and in death, we belong to God. Thanks be to God. Friends, in this season of waiting, of wondering, of longing, as we remember who we are and who we're called to be, may these simple words come to you again and again and again. In life and in death, we belong to God. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Thank you.